call uh, the meeting to order um, and begin with the um, Pledge of Allegiance. Please join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everybody to the Tuesday, October 8th uh, school board meeting. Um, first, I would like to um, welcome our student representatives, Piper Strunk, welcome back, and Allie Lynch, welcome. Um, are there first any adjustments to the agenda? I do have an adjustment. Okay. Um, Laura Briggs is unable to be with us tonight. She had a death in the family. Um, and we would like to replace uh, Laura's presentation with Noel Haroff's uh, presentation. Uh, he has a website update. Great, thank you. So that would be under new business. Okay. No, that will be under presentation. Or presentation, yeah. sorry. Um, next, may I have a motion for approval of board minutes? I move we approve the board minute. I move we approve the board minutes from September 10th, 2019. I have a second. Second. Okay. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Um, next, uh, we're going to hear comments from our student representatives. All right, so um, we're getting back into the swing of things. It's the first or second month of school. Um, sports are going well. Next week's a big week for uh, the student body as there's PSATs for underclassmen. And then we have Spirit Week and Homecoming, which is really exciting. And then um, also I know that Environmental Club is trying to um, uh, accomplish putting solar panels on the school this year. Um, we still have to do some research and create a proposal, um, but that's really exciting and something that we're really excited for, so. Yeah, and um, just a little bit about the events that have happened in the past few days. Um, I know that the school has been kind of a little bit tense lately um, with some of the things coming about. Um, about the sexual harassment um, allegations in regards to the school and the way they're handling it. Um, by talking to students this week, a lot have felt just a little bit confused about it, um, just kind of a lack of knowledge, hearing 30 different versions of one story, just kind of stuff like that. Um, and especially with a lot of news in the media, um, they've just like kind of been feeling a little bit overwhelmed. And Allie and I were lucky enough to sit down with Mr. Shedd yesterday to just kind of talk about how to continue on and we discussed sitting down as a school to talk about some of these things as a whole school um, in an assembly type thing um, to just talk about it, answer questions and just stuff like that. Um, we all want the same thing here. We all want to raise awareness for sexual harassment, people coming out. I know that that's something that we can all agree about. and. Um, we, I just, I do have faith in the school. Um, I've worked with Jeff Shedd and Mr. Carpenter for a while, and I know that they are gonna do what they can to help out and stuff like that. Um, I can attribute to everything they've done these past four years that I've been to this high school, and I know that they're gonna just try to make everything right for the students and make sure everyone feels safe and heard and stuff like that. So I really hope we can continue on in a proper way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for reaching out to your peers and sharing back with us um, the feedback you're getting. We really appreciate yeah. it. No problem. Thank you. Um, next, um, before we have uh, comments um, from the public on agenda items only. Before we um, uh, start that, I just want to remind uh, everybody that we follow policy um, B E. What is it? Sorry. B E D H. And um, we will strictly um, follow the rules there. If there are um, people in the audience who want to speak, we're going to um, give everybody uh, three minutes and please say your name, uh, address. Uh, if um, the, the thing I think to make clear that maybe some people in the audience don't always realize is that when we do have comments from the public, um, it is not a period of dialogue or exchange or um, an opportunity to answer questions. It's really an opportunity for public um, comments to be made and to be heard um, and taken note of if, um, if there are people who want direct uh, follow-up or direct answers, they, they need to um, reach out to the superintendent to meet one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. It has to be 
pertaining to something on the agenda. And, and yes, and um, any public comments um, that people want to make tonight has to be something related to our agenda. Okay. So with that said, um, if anybody in the audience would like to um, come up and speak at the podium, we'll be happy to hear you for the three minutes, just your name and address. Then we are going to move on to presentations. Uh, first, we are going to celebrate um, the success of the high school, the girls high school varsity lacrosse team championships in the spring um, of 2019, which I believe is right after school ended. A lot of the girls on the list have graduated, but we wanted to. Um, the coaches are first, so. We wanted to recognize their coaches and the team for their hard work. Um, so I'm going to come up to the podium and say names if you want to come up if you're here. Um, if you're not, if maybe the coach can take certificates to graduates. The coaches are not. Here, so. unless, <laughs> unless there are any lacrosse players in well, the I'll audience. Well, I'll say the names, and we'll see. We'll just say the names. I don't, and then we'll I don't the names think they are. <laughs> First, we're going to start with the coaches. Um, Mike Foley and Alex Spark. Yes. They're not here. Um, and Kurt Chapin. And then we have Allie Lynch. <laughs> Julia Thorak. There's there's a girls' play soccer game. So oh, okay, that's right. Carly Chapin. <coughs> Piper Strunk. <laughs> <laughs> Josie Beschenstein. Abby Doherty. Abby Agrandia, Grandia, Annie Guimond, Cami Wood, Charlotte Graham, Greta Frankwitz, Hannah Johnson, Hannah Lice, Lice, Lice. Catherine Concannon, Laura Ryer. Tatum Strunk, I'll give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy Haynes, Katie Haynes, sorry. Sammy Olson, Claire McDonald, Elise Branch, Annalise Rudberg, Ellie Gagnon, Leah Lindenau, Mia Ramsden and Paige Long. Congratulations, it was an amazing game. Amazing game and amazing season. Thank you. So, no, we'll be next on the website. Okay. All right, so next, in, um, in place of Laura Briggs, we're going to welcome Noel um, Heroff. Heroff to the podium if he's here. Is he here? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Uh, just a little brief um, website um, project report. Uh, as of uh, during the summer, we, have, we actually have four phases, the initial phase, development phase, um, pre-launch phase, and the um, application launch phase. And we finished the initial uh, phase from uh, July 1st on to the start of school year. Um, we just uh, had six out of seven tasks finished on the development phase. We have the uh, Android app and the iOS app <coughs> up. Um, uh, we have the uh, PowerSchool, integration started, so we have um, pretty much done that development stage. The last part of it is the pre-launch stage, and right now we have two out of the seven um, tasks completed. We have uh, trained the, uh, I want to call them super admins, um, those are the people who are going to be in charge of 
all the rest of the people, and then we also had the admin train. So uh, the things that we're gonna complete in the next couple months are the additional um, website training, um, then we're gonna start in the marketing, uh, telling our parents and our students you know, how to get on the web, how to get the uh, apps out of the, uh, the stores and so on and so forth. And then we're gonna follow that up with probably three campaigns. Um, that's about where we are. Okay, thank you, Noel. Okay. Any questions from the board? Is there an expected um, live launch time? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Great. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. So um, before we move on to administrative reports, the the board wants to just take a moment to pause and recognize uh, what's been um, going on, as the student represent representatives have mentioned. Um, we feel it's important to uh, put our voice out here uh, for everyone. Uh, it's, it takes time, I think, to, as a board to compose a letter together. Um, and we have to always, of course, be sensitive to privacy to um, uh, disc and not disclosing anything that we are not able to. So if you permit me, I'm going to um, read our, the school board's um, most updated uh, response to recent um, information and news. In light, of a student in light of student concerns and recent articles published in the Portland Press Herald over the weekend, the school board would like to offer a brief explanation of the facts to the extent we are permitted to do so. While we must protect individuals' privacy, the school board seeks to be as transparent as legally possible and most importantly wants to emphasize its dedication to student safety and well-being. All safety concerns are taken with the utmost seriousness and fastidiously pursued. During the school board's regular business meeting on June 11th, three Cape Elizabeth High School students spoke at the public comment portion of the meeting to address their concerns with the school department's response to reports of sexual harassment and assault of some students. The students stated that the reason for their public comments were to ensure the creation of a comprehensive policy that protects students who have experienced sexual assault or harassment, provide training to all staff on Title IX and mandated reporting, and ensure a concrete protocol for supporting students. Although the protocol of the school board business meeting does not allow for a verbal exchange or dialogue with the public, the students' comments and concerns were taken and he were heard and taken very seriously by every board member. Since that time, members of the school board met with one of the three students, held multiple conversations with administrators, and initiated the review of the Student Discrimination and Harassment Complaint Procedure, otherwise known as ACAA-R and reporting child abuse and neglect policy known as JLF. Neither the policy that ACAA-R supports, which is ACAA, um, in which an updated version was voted on and approved during the June 11th meeting, nor the procedure are new. So neither the procedure nor the policy are new. They are both long-standing, and the procedure was reviewed this summer in response to the student's request and the recently changed laws around mandated reporting. The, the district's Title IX coordinator composed a subcommittee over the summer to review procedure ACCA-R and procedure JLF. There were lengthy conversations in this subcommittee, and not many changes were recommended to the procedure. However, the school board plans to continue the conversation with greater stakeholder input for as long as needed. At the time of the June 11th board meeting, the district already had scheduled attorneys from Drubman Woodson, Woodson to conduct a training workshop for administrators, counselors, and local enforcement officers on these updated laws regarding mandated reporting. Further workshops and trainings will be provided to faculty and staff. Our role as a school board is to uphold policy while doing all we can to keep our students safe and supported. In any situation involving allegations of sexual assault, the administration does its best to respect the rights of both the accuser and the accused, to investigate the allegations as thoroughly as possible, and to take prompt remedial action where warranted. Sometimes it is impossible to come to a definitive conclusion about what did or did not happen particularly when the event took place off school grounds and outside of school hours. 
However, in all cases, we expect that the administration will take whatever steps are necessary to ensure that any, that any students who feel violated are supported. Although, as these students have pointed out, sexual assault is a critical issue in our society and in our schools, so too is bullying. Our policy and procedures on bullying and cyberbullying prevention in schools, JICK and JICK-R, prohibit bullying and require that our administration act quickly to investigate and address all complaints of bullying brought to the administration by students and or their families. Through multiple conversations and review of available facts, the school board has been satisfied that the administration has adhered to policy with great sensitivity. Clearly, not all students agree, and therefore we have work to do. We are committed to working together so that all students feel heard, safe, and respected. Thank you. From here, we are going to go on to uh, updates from the principals. Good evening, it's great to see you all. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, I have just one highlight for tonight, um, and it's a really big one. Uh, our new playground is officially open for recess, and kids have been out there and playing, and it, it is absolutely phenomenal. I'm not sure if um, some of you have had a chance to see. Um, it, it's quite impressive and even more impressive when you see the students playing on it. Um, the design was just brilliant and there's so much to do for the kids. Um, and so we're very pleased. So what I really just wanna do tonight is publicly thank a few people. So starting with the school board for your support. I know that the playground has been a topic of discussion for several <coughs> years. And you really supported us last, last year. Um, the citizens of Cape Elizabeth who supported um, a, the partial funding of, of part of the project um, through the school budget last spring, and also the many generous donors who filled the very large budget gap um, that was needed to complete the playground. It wouldn't be possible without you folks. Um, all the members of the Pond Cove Playground Committee, which parents and staff members alike, and uh, we've just also had many people continuing to support. There, we have parents volunteering every day to water the new plantings, and it's, it's just such a wonderful community effort. So we are very appreciative, and um, everyone's efforts will, this will benefit students for many years. So thank you all, and, and have a nice evening. Thank you, Jason. The playground's amazing. I w wanna thank also all the parents and um, the nurse involved in making this happen, raising the money. Um, it was it was wonderful to see the, the children just break free um, yes. the day of the ribbon cutting. Thank it's you It's so great, much. I mean, it's wonderful, and it makes us proud to be part of this community, too, so thank you. Exactly, thank you. <clears throat> I, I'm happy Jason's playground's fixed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the Pond Cove Playground. I, I have learned a lot about elementary school kids at recess right out my window. It's been fun. Um, but really quickly for us, the last year we began a mental health focus at, with the Yellow Tulip Project, um, kind of joined forces. And I just want to remind everyone or let you know if you don't, haven't already heard, but on Thursday is National uh, Mental Health Day or Awareness Day. Um, so we are planning... We're trying to get more of the community involved as opposed to just our students. Um, so we've kind of got an open invite to people that want to join us for that. Uh, I think it's going to be kind of all broken up in around an hour and a half between 10.30 and 12, something like that. Uh, so you're invited. Come on down. You can purchase a tulip bulb and plant it if you would like. But it's really, we're fortunate to have the support of SEIF um, and the Thompson family for, for helping us with that. So we're excited to be doing that and that's gonna be on Thursday. Thanks. Thanks, George. <coughs> so a uh, couple of things uh, for the high school. Uh, first of all, the numbers, I know there was a little bit of a conversation about school numbers and that sort of thing. When we ended last year, based on budget projections, um, I'm, I didn't look back to correct myself, but I, I was projecting at that time between 508 and 512 students at the high school for this year, which was about 
25 down. Um, and in fact, we had a surge of uh, families moving in um, and a surge of other students coming to the high school. So we actually are now at about the same place we were last year. We're just a couple students below. I think we're at 530 students when I looked at that today. Um, that has had some impact, uh, particularly in science and math classes. We do have a number of larger classes, a little few more than we would like to have. Um, but I'm confident working through the budget process again and sort of looking at the projections and sort of figuring out whether we've got a trend or what we've got that we will take a look at that and we will address that. Um, but science and math in particular are, have some, uh, some higher than normal numbers. On average, they still are within school board guidelines, but there are some individual classes that are definitely higher than normal. Um, and then I wanted to mention this, which is pertinent to a topic of um, some interest and I know has already been addressed. So back in the spring of 2014, um, uh, a girl in my advisory group at that time who was a junior came to me and with a social worker um, who, with whom she developed a close working relationship, supportive relationship, and she didn't get into a lot of detail with me, but it was apparent that she was essentially trusting me to know that she at some point had been a survivor of sexual assault. Um, so that was it in 2014, and the social worker's idea was to channel this girl's energies and, and grief and, and the trauma that comes from that sort of an event into organizing a school-wide event to sort of um, educate students about sexual assault and consent and the importance of that. So over the entire next year, there was a group of staff and students who worked together um, to put together and organize that event uh, that took place in towards the end of the year, one of the last two weeks of the years, and every single junior and senior had a full day experience with lots of different workshops um, and lots of different experiences. It was a really, really, really positive experience. So that was a full day, every single junior and senior. We repeated that experience in 2018. Um, and every single junior and senior had that experience in 2018. I do want to emphasize um, that in 2014, the girl and the social worker who came to me were coming, <coughs> coming two years before the Me Too movement really hit. Um, in 2020, our plan is, so the spring of this year, we're just starting to organize a similar event for this year because our hope is that as Cape Elizabeth High School graduates graduate, um, that every single student will have a full day experience of workshops. Um, in addition to that, when, um, when the Me Too movement was at its absolute peak shortly after the election of 2016, uh, we held a student-led assembly on this, this topic as well for about an hour and a half for the entire student body. Um, we will be holding additional events this week because I agree with the school board. It's clear that there is some more information to get out. There is some more education to happen, clarifying roles and responsibilities and, and continually learning from experiences and from information with students. And I will say I look forward to working with students to organize those, to address their needs, to clarify confusions, and to get questions answered. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Okay, ne uh, next we are, we have Dell. Right? There he is. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the right place. Uh, I just wanted to share with the board with regard to special education that during last week's early release, uh, staff assembled to work on fulfilling the, prof the professional development requirements of our corrective action plan from last year's special education audit by DOE. Uh, the focus was on timelines as well as calibration exercises with regard to writing IEPs. And I just wanted to share that we're currently servicing 163 students in special ed, and we have 20 students in referral and two students placed out of district. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Good evening. Kathy Stankard, our Director of Teaching and Learning. Yes, and, but and. tonight I would like to speak to you in my role as the Cape Elizabeth School Department Affirmative Action Officer and Title IX Coordinator. For the past couple of years, there has been, appropriately, heightened awareness of and sensitivity to 
gender-based discrimination, and sexual harassment. The Me Too movement has drawn attention to the prevalence of sexual violence. And just today, two cases concerning gay rights and transgender protections were argued before the Supreme Court. As a community, we have been working hard to respond to these changes. We've also sought to be proactive in ensuring the physical, social, and emotional safety of our students and staff while they are in our schools. One way we do so is through policy. For example, last spring, the Policy Committee made several revisions to policy ACAA, Harassment and Sexual Harassment of Students, including expanding the investigative responsibilities of the Title IX coordinator to help keep our students safe. These changes were adopted at the June school board meeting. And tonight, this policy is again before you, this time to ensure that harassment on the basis of a student's gender identity or expression is strictly prohibited. The policy committee is also recommending updates to policy AC, non-discrimination, equal opportunity, and affirmative action. And in the coming months, we'll be considering revisions to policy JLF, reporting child abuse and neglect, and the development of a new policy, JLFA, child sexual abuse prevention and response, again, in order to strengthen our capacity to keep our students safe. Another way we protect students is through procedures. For the past couple of months, a group of stakeholders have been reviewing and improving the investigative procedures associated with policies ACAF, ACAA, and JLF. These participants include the superintendent, myself, a Cape Elizabeth High School social worker, the Cape Elizabeth High School health teacher, a middle school counselor, a Pond Cove social worker, our chief of police, and a Cape Elizabeth High School student. Discussions have been serious, earnest, and thought-provoking. We want to make it as easy as possible for students who believe themselves to have been the victim of discrimination or harassment to get the support they need. For this reason, we're continuing to emphasize that students can bring their concern to any staff member and are further clarifying the steps that school and district administrators must follow. As mentioned, our top priority is to ensure the safety and well-being of our students. When there's a possibility that discrimination and harassment have occurred, we provide immediate, interim, comprehensive supports to the student who has brought the complaint. We also stop whatever we're doing to investigate the allegation right away. In the past year, we received 10 complaints, including an anonymous complaint regarding possible violations of policy ACAA in our schools. Nine of the 10 complaints concerned sexual harassment and ranged from words, gestures, and photos to unwanted sexual contact. Some of the alleged harassment occurred on campus during school hours. In other cases, it occurred in students' homes or hotels, on weekends, or during school breaks. We investigated all of the complaints because regardless of where and when they occurred, it is our duty and our desire to make sure our students feel safe at school. In five of the 10 cases, we determined that it was more likely than not that harassment had occurred, and we imposed disciplinary measures, including, in one case, the maximum penalty contained in our policy. Federal and state privacy laws prevent us from sharing any further details. As importantly, in all cases, regardless of the finding, we have provided significant supports to the students who brought the complaints, including counseling and limits on where the alleged perpetrators can be while in school. A third way we protect students is through training. For example, last June, we hosted a training for all of our administrators and therapeutic personnel on federal and state laws pertaining to sexual harassment and sexual abuse. Our police chief and the Cumberland County District Attorney also attended this training. The purpose of the training was to seek guidance on the intersection of Title IX, which is a federal law, and mandated reporting, which is a state law. 
Under Title IX, social workers are considered confidential employees, which means they do not have to report allegations of harassment to school or district administrators when asked by the student victim not to do so. In fact, social workers might be called before their licensing board for doing so. However, under current interpretations of the mandated reporting law, all employees of the Cape Elizabeth School Department are required to report cases of suspected child abuse or neglect. If the alleged perpetrator is a parent or guardian, the report is made to the Department of Health and Human Services. If the alleged perpetrator is not the child's custodian, then the report is made to the district attorney's office. Having received this additional guidance, all employees, including social workers, are now adhering fully to the mandated reporting requirement. In addition, all Cape Elizabeth School Department employees, beginning with bus drivers, nutrition service workers, and custodians in August, and continuing with teachers and administrators this fall, are receiving training in child sexual abuse awareness and prevention, as required by LD 1180, an act to require education in public preschool programs and elementary schools regarding child sexual abuse. We are also increasing our educational programming for students, for example, school counselors, social workers, and health teachers in all three schools are collaborating with the Children's Safety Partnership and the Maine Department of Education to expand our child sexual abuse prevention curriculum. The intent of this curriculum, which will be codified in new policy JLFA, is to one, include age appropriate education regarding physical and personal boundaries, including biologically accurate body terminology. Two, help children identify unsafe or uncomfortable situations, including a range of feelings, touches, touches or violations of physical boundaries. Three, help children identify safe adults with whom they can talk to about unsafe or uncomfortable situations. And four, help children identify and develop skills to support a friend who may be experiencing safe or uncomfortable situations. In addition, the middle school has received a SEAF grant to partner with Hardy Girls Healthy Women and Maine Boys to Men to offer programming on gender stereotypes, gender-based violence prevention, and bystander education to seventh and eighth graders. Middle school counselors are also working with the Sexual Assault Response Services of Southern Maine and the Young Adult Abuse Prevention Program to provide sexual harassment and violence prevention programming to all students in grades five through eight. Trauma-informed education on these topics with a particular focus on what affirmative consent means and how to stay safe online have long been part of the high school health curriculum and we are continuing to take advantage of community resources to build student awareness and skills, including, as Mr. Shedd mentioned, by partnering with SARSM and YAP to sponsor our third biennial all-day workshop for juniors and seniors. This sexual assault awareness for everyone event will take place, as was mentioned, next spring. Finally, as soon as revisions to the various policies and procedures I've mentioned tonight have been completed, we will be collaborating with students and with staff to plan additional <coughs> education and training. We want to make sure that everyone understands their role and their responsibilities in preventing gender-based discrimination and sexual harassment as well as all of the constructive actions they can take to maintain the safety and well-being of our students, which has been and always will be our highest priority. Thank you. Any questions, Kathy? Thank you, Kathy. I, thank you. Oh, sorry. I want to thank you, Kathy, for the thorough report. That's phenomenal, and I think you guys have been obviously doing a lot of work, and it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Kathy, thank very you. much. Next, we have Marcy, our business manager. Thank you. Good evening. Mm -hmm. From the business office world, last Friday, I attended the sixth annual law seminar given by Drummond Winsome for Maine School Business Officers. 
And the three main sessions that were handled were first, how to be an effective business manager, especially in preparing for collaborative bargaining negotiations. And the key point that he pointed out was that we are to expect 100% perfection from ourselves. So I will do that going into it. The second session was um, to provide an overview of the impact of main laws relevant to the three aspects of project financing. The three main categories they covered, funding sources, local approvals, contractor selection. And the third session was a presentation on how to avoid inadvertently triggering an Affordable Care Act penalty assessment. Another thing I will pay very close attention to. The next session that will be very important to attend will be December 6th, also by Drummond Woodsum, um, specifically again focusing on the collective bargaining negotiations. And in your packet, I have our graph to visually point out budget-wise how we are doing with our numbers. So at this point in time, as of the end of September, <coughs> the normal spending pattern would be at 25% expected, and the total general fund for all of the budget categories is at 24%. Again, the far column with the green arrow shows you the total for the general fund budget categories. So we were right on target at this time. Any questions? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have um, superintendent updates. So you have an enrollment sheet. Um, actually, it's not in your packet. Uh, um, you have an additional sheet that is a corrected version. So uh, just make sure that the, we're looking at the October enrollment. The one in your packet says September enrollment. So, um, so the the. Um, the loose one is the correct one. I wanted you to know that we have submitted the revolving renovations application to the Department of Education. Uh, Marcy spent a great deal of time last week driving back and forth to Augusta and trying to find our signature, get, gather our signatures so we could apply. Um, the good news is it looks like they may, might be looking at our buildings as three separate buildings because they asked us to separate out our application from Pond Cove and the middle school. So that's really good news. Um, you'll remember that the revolving renovations grant uh, that we spoke about provides for 30% of the project and then um, offers a 0% interest rate on the remaining 70%. We have submitted uh, uh, applications for 12 projects and there's a list of those projects in your packet. Um, we should hear, uh, and we did get some calls from Augusta with some specific questions which we were able to answer, so they have looked at our application. Uh, we should hear something about our ranking in November. That won't be a... That won't be an answer that we have it or, or didn't get it, but it will be, uh, we'll have some idea about how we rank according to the other applications. So that's pretty exciting. Great. Good. Thank you. Any questions about that? Okay, thank you, Donna. All right, next we're moving on to new business. May I have a motion for item 7A? I move we approve the job description for peer mentor. I second. Uh, any discussion? Great. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Next, may I have a motion for 7B? I move we approve the comprehensive emergency management plan. So this is a confidential plan, but it is in front of you. Um, the committee worked all last year on it and uh, in, through the summer. Um, we have added to the plans that we have a parent reunification plan, which is pretty exciting, and we will be doing some trainings in that this summer, or, or this, sorry, school year. Um, so I do need to collect those back, um, and they'll be distributed to the appropriate um, schools and police department and fire department, but they are confidential documents because they give some information about our students and our procedures. So. Uh, may I have a second? I don't think you do, but I'll give it to you. Well, are we not voting or are we not voting? I believe we are. Oh, it's been, it's, yeah. 
We would just have to vote. Right. Nobody second me. Nobody second. Oh, nobody second no. it. Oh. So Elizabeth, just second. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Any discussion? I thought you had second it. Um, I would just like to say I know this has been a long, ongoing process with a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of time. So I appreciate all that's been put into it by all the parties involved. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. You hear it say thank you. Yeah, I know this didn't come by quickly. No. <laughs> by any means. Okay, all those in favor? Next, item 7C. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the following 2019-2020 coaching nominations as described in our packet, or should I go through them? That's okay. You can just the, say okay, as described, as described in, our in our packet. Yeah. Oh, oh second. Say the second. Sorry. May I have a second? I second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? No. Uh, so I just want to point out that the assistant tennis um, position is, it's not a new position. Right. Um, it's a new person to that position, but it doesn't mean it's a new position. Uh, the coach moved from uh, coach to assistant coach. Great, thank you. Any other comments? All those in favor? Okay. Next, we have um, item 7D. May I have a motion, please? I move that we consider an action to approve the, um, the co curricular stipends as listed in our packet. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Who said that? You. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Next, uh, item 7D. May I have a motion? I move uh, we approve the following 2019-2020 peer mentors, Aaron Taylor for Karen Jenkins and Courtney Farrell for Christine Marshall. May I have a second? I second. Any discussion? Is Karen Jenkins the new high school nurse? Yes. Great. Thank you. Again, I'd like to thank Aaron and Courtney for taking these roles. I think mentors, um, are a great asset to any community professionally and personally. So, thank you. All those in favor? Could I, could I just ask one question? Oh, sure, sorry. So, so is um, Courtney for us the math teacher and she's the mentor for Christine Marshall, who I'm thinking is drama? Mm -hmm. And that it doesn't have to have anything to do with content area or anything? Um, we, we try to match content area, but sometimes it's not possible, so. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Okay. Item uh, seven F. May I have a motion, please? I move we authorize ninety-six thousand four hundred forty-two dollars for lease purchase agreement for one school bus in the form presented to the meeting, and that a copy of said vote be included in the minutes of this meeting. May I have a second? A second. Any discussion? This was included in our budget? Yes. It, well, yes. In our budget, yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. And this has been discussed, right, through yeah. the whole yes. budget season last yeah. year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All those in favor? <laughs> Item 7G, may I have a motion, please? I move we approve Hope Straw to be certified for the school board representative to the delegate assembly of the Maine School Board Association. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Thank you, Hope. Yes, thank you. Thank you for going. Going to it. Oh, um, uh, let's see. All those in favor? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> thank you, buddy. Okay. <clears throat> Item 7H, may I have a motion, please? I move the board consider supporting the MSBA resolutions, the first being staff use of social media. <coughs> so read this out here. Yeah, so you have a copy in your packet of the resolutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And can we consider them separately and vote on them separately? Yes, we are. Yeah. 
So why don't you read Hope what we have there, just there. Uh, here it says, the school board develops policy and guidelines drawing clear requirements about who has authorization to create and monitor school-sponsored sites on Facebook and other platforms and use of social media by employees during work hours and outside school. <clears throat> I have a second? I second. <coughs> Any discussion? I think it's important, um, given you know how uh, things can fly so fast on um, on social media, the internet, that uh, we have a responsible person uh, um, taking control of our content and our our information. All those in favor? Hope, do you want to read the next one? You want to just do them all? Sure. Um, the next one, HB, school board, use, school board use of social media. The same standard applies to social media as other more traditional means of communication. Includes a clear voice as an individual and not on behalf of the full board. I have a second. second. Any discussion? I think it is important that we adopt this because as a uh, single individual, as a school board member, you have no power, you have no authority. We only have authority as a board together. And so when um, posting on whatever social media platform a school board member may choose to use, it's important to remember that you are posting as yourself as an individual and you're not commenting on school events or school policies or that sort of thing. Posting pictures of apple picking or whatever. But that you are not commenting on and talking about school board issues. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, HC, legislative focus on students. The legislature should be presented through the lens of whether or not it is the, in the best interest of the students we serve. May I have a second? Second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. HD Board Teacher Relations set <coughs> goals to improve communication around key policies that most directly affect teachers and review and collaborate with staff on policies that need updating. I have a second. I second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Finally, HE, CTE Funding Restoration. This resolution calls for the state to restore career and technical education funding to fiscal year 2019 levels for all CTE regions. I have a second. I second. Donna, do you have a little clarity on this yeah, at all? Um, they have reduced the, the uh, CTE funding in the past. They've also changed how it used to go to the districts and then the districts would be billed by the CTEs and now it goes directly to the CTEs from the state. Um, so they're just, they're asking to restore the funding with the new call for students participating in these programs um, and actually our numbers are increasing, which is a good thing. Um, and so we our need CTE more funding. would be PADS? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, uh, well, I hope you're up next again. So if you don't mind me, <laughs> reviewing. Um, so uh, tonight we have four policies that are before us for what we're calling a first reading. And um, to the extent there are any audience members who are not familiar with the process, what this means is the policy committee um, took these, had these policies uh, before us at the last policy committee meeting. Uh, we're bringing them before the board tonight for review and there won't be any vote on the, the edits or suggestions to these policies. The board will then um, provide feedback. We'll collect feedback from public or other parties that want to, to um, provide input. We go back to the policy committee. We make revisions, consider in input at that point. Um, and then we come back to the board a second time for what we call a second reading. And at that point, if the board's content with the, the changes that have been made, we would vote on it to adopt the, re the revisions or if it's a new policy, to adopt the new policy. Um, and if the board isn't satisfied with the revisions at that point, it could get sent for a third, third time to policy. 
Um, so I thought I'd go over that process a little bit to kind of give the audience who may not be familiar with that of, um, an overview of the process and understand that these four policies are first readings tonight. We have modifications um, that are suggested and then they'll all go back to the policy committee meeting which is open to the public. It's taking place on October 22nd um, and everyone's invited to attend that, um, attend that meeting. So um, quickly uh, to get to the specifics of the business tonight. So um, AC is, um, we've, the first three policies have, have a similar edit that's been made. AC is non-discrimination and equal opportunity in the first section. <laughs> ACAA is harassment and sexual harassment of students. ACAB is harassment and sexual harassment of school employees. So I, I, I'm lumping these three together because what we did to all three of these was we've updated um, these to include changes that add the term to cover uh, gender identity and expression. So this is an expansion of the coverage of these policies. Um, in ACAA, we've also um, added uh, the, an administrator as an, as an individual party who uh, has capability to investigate complaints. So those are the edits to those three documents. Um, finally, then there's ACAD, which is our hazing policy. And what we've done with that policy is we've modified the first, sorry, the second paragraph. Um, the second paragraph is sort of a uh, expansion on what hazing might entail. And it currently reads, um, injurious hazing also includes any activity expected of a student as a condition of joining or maintaining membership in a group that humiliates, degrades, abuses, or endangers a student. And we've added, regardless of the student's willingness to participate in the activity. So what this does is it creates, it eliminates effectively a loophole where the students may be felt, to, felt felt that they, they're doing it voluntarily, but it's not necessarily mm -hmm. truly voluntary. Mm -hmm. um, so as I mentioned, as a first reading, there's no vote required at this time. Um, these four policies will continue to be discussed at the October 22nd policy committee meeting. All public input and participation is welcome. That includes students, so please feel free to attend those meetings. They're after school. Um, I also want to highlight, um, as mentioned, um, by Kathy Stanker during her report that on our radar for the fall are policies JLF and JLFR. These are the child abuse and neglect reporting and related administrative procedures as well as the currently in progress new policy JLFA, child sexual abuse prevention and response. response. Um, so those are very important policies. They're, they're high on our, our radar. They're um, going to be coming up in upcoming meetings. Um, to the extent there are any other uh, related policies um, that anyone you know, would like to bring to the board for review or suggested uh, modifications or input, we are always welcome to uh, input from the public and we welcome and invite participation in the policy meetings. They're open to the public. They're typically the last Tuesday of the month. Uh, but they're always published on the town website. They're also published in the Cape Courier. Uh, it's at 3.30 in the Jordan Conference Room. Um, and again, students are welcome as well. Um, and uh, well, that's it. Thanks Thank so much, Hope. Okay, so now we're moving on to um, a much anticipated approval of district goals for the strategic plan. Um, we have them included in our packet. Uh, do we do we not, do we not have to vote on these, Donna? It doesn't look like yes. we do. Yes. Okay. There's just not a. Oh. Okay. The so um, the goals. Let's. Um, yeah, it's on the next page. Oh, but isn't it's that for the school board goals? These are the strategic oh, plans. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yep. 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 Okay. So, let's first have a motion, and then we can have a motion. I move we approve the district goals for the strategic plan. Do you want me to read the goals? Uh, I definitely. Yeah. Okay, so the district goals as developed by the Cape Elizabeth School Department School Board for the 2020 to 2025 strategic plan. Um, these were created September 25th, 2019. As a product of as a product of, the holy strategic, strategic am I church. saying that whole thing? As a product of 
the strategic search that we conducted. The future search. The future the search, search that we conducted. started conducting in February and the follow through for, for multiple meetings with various stakeholders to whittle down all the information we received from that future search to come out According to the district and the stakeholders that were involved, these rose to the top as the most important. Fair? Yep. Okay. There are five of them. The first is health and well being. Our schools will provide a supportive learning environment in which physical, social, and emotional well being are valued and promoted. The next one is global competency. Our students will be personally responsible, aware, empathetic and engaged local and global citizens. Next is multiple pathways and definitions of success. Our schools will value, promote, and celebrate multiple pathways and definitions of success. Safe, sustainable, and effective facilities. Our schools will be safe and effective facilities. They will be updated and maintained to meet the needs of students and staff in accordance with long-term financial planning. And the final goal is environmental responsibility. The school department will prioritize environmental responsibility, including stewardship and sustainability. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? I, I, I want to I want to say that, as Heather mentioned, this is um, a, um, comes from a, the contribution and work and hard thinking of a huge number of stakeholders. Um, I think we have o had over a hundred people participating in the future search. Um, from from that point where we met for two full days, or two, oh, one and a half days. Um, the, the information that came was then analyzed by even um, a smaller group, but still stakeholders, um, <clears throat> and eventually, you know, was um, filtered down into the, the, the number one prominent themes um, that came from the two days of talking and discussions. From there, uh, the school board and administrators uh, did more work, and then on the school board retreat, we whittled it down and worked on our wordsmithing, and we have come up with these uh, five goals. Um, from these goals, the uh, administration is then um, going to go forward and create um, their curriculum, their lesson plans, mm -hmm. their strategic plan, strategic plan, and um, move forward and, and make sure that everything we do for the next approximately five years mm -hmm. supports these goals that the community has come together to form. So I want to thank again everybody who participated. It was a huge success, and I feel that um, these five uh, goals truly represent um, the wishes of everybody there. So thank you to everybody who participated. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All those in favor. Thank you. <clears throat> and next we have um, the formation of school board goals. We have included with our packet um, the goals that we uh, established for last school year, for the 18-19 school year. Um, and we need to come up, if not repeat the same ones, come up with ones for this year. So we are open to do discussion. Um, board members were asked to uh, think about this in advance and arrive tonight um, with their comments um, for forming this year's school board goals. Mm -hmm. So. Should we may perhaps start with uh, the last year's old goal, develop a new strategic plan. We, we um, have done our goals, so now we need to support Correct. the strategic plan. That would be my suggestion to keep number one and change, develop a new to support. Okay. The next, second goal from last year was define and implement a collaborative and proactive budget development process that includes stakeholders such as town council and community members. How does the board feel about goal number two? I would like to take out define and implement and change it to continue. Mm -hmm. 
continue the collaborative and proactive budget process. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Last year, that was a brand new goal for the school board, and it was very successful. I think it established um, a path forward that I would expect we repeat every year. So for sure, for sure we're going to keep that one going. Thank you. School board number th goal number three from last year, participate with the town council in the formation of a committee composed of all stakeholders to fund and finalize the school facility study plan. They implement the findings of the plan by making strategic investments which will modernize and repair aging school buildings and grounds as well as maximize student learning and safety. So how can we change this? I think there are a couple of ways we could go about this. I think that the first could, one would argue that our strategic plan goals around facilities cover that. So there's an option to t take that out mm -hmm. because number one would cover that. Mm -hmm. If we want to be very explicit about this as a priority, which I am not against, um, you could really take out the first sentence and just have implement the findings of the I mean, you'd have to beef up, you couldn't just say the plan, it would be, you know, the facilities need study. And, um, or the, the outcomes of the building committee or, you know, something like that um, by making strategic investments. I think the rest of that is fine. But, you know, involving the building committee in the language would probably be good. I would like to say, no, oh, go ahead. Were you going to say something? Go ahead. Oh, I was just, I, I'm in favor of keeping it in our um, goals with modifications to include the building committee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's essentially what I was going to say is that I think this is important enough that it's worth stating more clearly and sort of distilling it out. Absolutely. Any other comments, questions or additions, changes? So yeah. how should it read? I think you just wordsmith that a little bit. Yeah, Implement okay. the findings along with the business, uh, the building committee of the plan by making strategic investments. You can use a lot of that same language, but just incorporate the building committee. Okay, so let's let's wordsmith this together um, because we're hopefully going to vote on it. Okay. So we're going to start with implement the findings, or implement the out the findings uh, and outcomes of the facility study for the recommendations. So, well, no, because there's going to be a lot of recommendations, right? Implement the Potential. findings. Mm -hmm. We should consider the findings of the facility needs study, and. Yeah take into consideration the, the recommendations, recommendations of the building committee. Okay, hold Say on. that again. Consider you the can. findings. Yes, of you the, can. Consider the findings of the facilities study, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then? And take into, and take, take into consideration oh. the recommendations of the building committee. And take in the considerations Building committee. Uh huh. Yep. Okay. And make strategic investments which will modernize and repair aging school buildings and ground mm -hmm. as as listed. And make strategic investments. I'm sorry. Where are you getting the rest of that? Are you getting it from it's the strategic? The last of it. It's the last of it. The, yeah. rest of it. the rest of it's the same. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. But I think you want to say, consider the findings of the facility study, take in the considerations of the building. Take, take, in the take in the considerations of the building committee and make strategic investments which will mobilize. Yes. Okay. So you just want to get rid of and and make yeah. that a okay. comma. comma. And then that's wordsmith. Okay. 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 Um, I like it. Yep. And then number four from last year, we have cultivate and leverage community involvement with the Cape Elizabeth School District, which I believe should actually be school department. department. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we've learned since then it should be department. Any comments on this one? I feel like 
we probably have more work to do in this area if we would like to keep that as a goal. I, yeah, I for sure. Like we were more successful in really hitting the first three goals. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if there's desire, there's probably a lot more work that we could do there if we really focused our energies on it. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, I think we did do some good work, especially when you look at all the stakeholders that we brought in, all the community involvement with the strategic plan, and that is then setting us up into our first goal. So it's something that we've worked on, but I think it can sort of always mm -hmm. be a goal mm -hmm. to have, mm -hmm. to work Great. together. Well, you can always work towards that. We have a wealth of talent and, and knowledge and experience in our community, and I think we have a lot of community members willing and eager to share. So we just need to find find a way. I also believe, you know, they can pull in, some of these community members can pull into some of the district goals. I'm thinking of environmental responsibility. We have plenty of people in this, within this district, in this community that, um, you know, their work is around sustainability and mm -hmm. solar and various things and to pull them in and gain their knowledge. So. I think it's kind of a broad way that, a broad um, sort of umbrella that can cover a lot of the district goals. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. So I think it's worth, I agree, we have a lot of room, but let's keep it and keep working towards it. I think there was a, I think there was a very big push and a lot of energy put towards the needs assessment last year yeah. and the strategic plan. And I think it took a lot of our time. And so this year, maybe this can be something that gets mm -hmm. a little bit of a bump. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do do we do we want to do we care? <laughs> this might be a stupid question, but do we care about the order of our goals? I don't think it's stupid. You think supporting the strategic plan should stay first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I sort and of I like the order. Yeah. It, okay. I think it's great. Well, then that said, um, we need to approve it. We need to approve it. Um, and I'm going to just read the, the four, um, and then someone can make a motion, just because I think I may have been one of the few taking notes. So if I have this correct, um, the school board goals proposed for the 2019-2020 school year are, uh, one, support a new strategic plan, two, Continue the collaborative and proactive budget developmental process that includes stakeholders such as town council and community members. Three, participate with the town council in the formation. Oh, wait. Mm -mm. Oh, no, that was taking that one out. Sorry. <laughs> implement the findings um, of the. Implement the findings and outcomes. Oh. No, no. Consider. Oh, sorry. The consider the sorry. Consider the findings of the facility study, take in the considerations of the building committee, and make strategic investments which modernize and repair aging school buildings and grounds, as well as maximize student learning and safety. And four, cultivate and leverage community involvement with the Cape Elizabeth School Department. Fantastic. May I have a motion? And move that we approve the school board goals for 2019-2020 school year as read by our chair. <laughs> so I second. No, nope, go ahead. We both second. We both second. Okay. Any discussion? No. Okay. Um, it, I think it's easy for these to get eclipsed by the formation of the strategic plan, yet um, as a school board, these goals are every year really important that we visit them, reestablish or recreate any new goals. I want to thank everybody for um, their thought process on this and working hard on last year's goals. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next, um, I want to ask if there are any uh, agenda requests for, um, from the school board, school board agenda request. Um, announcement of upcoming meetings. We have um, PAS is the next meeting. They've had one this um, semester already um, in, in September, at, which was at PAS. 
Um, they um, continue to have a large um, influx of students from Cape Elizabeth, which is to me very exciting. Um, students um, are interested in visiting. A lot of students visit, may or may not continue and have classes there, but they have a steady, strong um, enrollment number coming from Cape this year. The next meeting is October 17th um, at 8.30 a.m. Next policy committee, hope you commented it, but you can just repeat yep. it. Uh, the next policy committee meeting is at 3 p.m. Uh, on October 22nd, um, and that's held here in the Jordan Conference Room. And an agenda will be posted shortly before that meeting. Thank you. Okay. Um, next we have, um, on same day, October 22nd, the school board um, workshop, which is when um, the um, folks from Colby um, Company of Engineering and, and Scott Simons Architects are going to do a presentation of their report, um, their final report to us of their facility study. And then we have the October 29th, 6 p.m. public meeting needs assessment report town council chambers town hall. That is essentially, a, um, a, will be similar to the workshop, mm -hmm. but this is more for the benefit of everybody in the community um, to hear um, and ask questions directly to the, um, again, the people from Colby and Scott Simons. Should I mention calendar committee? Oh, calendar committee. Yeah. There's um, also a calendar committee. I believe we settled on November 18th. Yes. <laughs> um, it's a Monday at 3.30. And should I give a little review? Yeah. Or no? yeah. Should I drop the bomb? About before Labor Day? It's uh, still a draft. It's still a draft, um, <laughs> but it's worth sharing. We had a really nice meeting the other this week. Um, and I think a big piece of what leads our uh, calendar is this wonderful fact that we do have a connection with paths and that with the districts that are connected to paths, we are only allowed to have five dissimilar days. Is that described well? Yes. And there are some inherent built-in days already that happen where, for example, all the other districts have a workshop day in October, so that's one. We uh, do not come to school on election day in November, that's two. Other schools have off a day in April um, for a certain reason, I forget. No, 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 sorry. The other one, I'm sorry, in March. March. It's in March, they do a professional day that's dissimilar for us. So that brings us up to three, and if we only are allowed five, the problem this year, drum roll please, is that Labor Day happens so late. And because Labor Day is happening as late as it possibly can, all the other di districts are meeting before Labor Day this year. Um, and going back to school. So they're going back to school. And so if we were to go to school after Labor Day, that would bring us to six mm -hmm. dissimilar days, which we cannot do. The good news is, is that if we started before Labor Day, the discussion was that it would start on Tuesday the 1st. It still is starting in September but it is before Labor Day. So we're having those conversations um, and the fact that our hands are a little bit tied if we want to be connected to this PAS experience. It also impacts experience. graduation. It also impacts graduation, so that was the other thing I was gonna say. Oh, Typically graduation is the second Sunday of the month of June, and we have a, currently as our final days the 9th and the 10th, and so we would move graduation to Sunday the <coughs> 6th. Um, and I think uh, this is just our first draft, our first look at everything. Uh, Superintendent Wolfram is meeting later this month, or next yes, month? Yes, the November. day of the PAS meeting, um, October 17th. Yep, with other, um, with other superintendents to discuss it further. But some other conversations that came up in this calendar committee meeting were um, concern about early release days. Um, Pond Cove, some of the teachers expressed um, a desire to have full days as opposed to the early release. Um, 
high school when last? Sorry, full day professional development? Full day professional development. So instead of all the early releases, the information that was received before this, which was partial, was uh, that they would rather not do early releases but have two full days of professional development instead of broken up into, so you can either have two full days, I'm counting on you to correct me if I'm wrong on this, right. <laughs> two full days, four half days, mm -hmm. or 13 early release days yes. that we've planned. Okay. And there was some feedback from Pond Cove teachers that they would like the full two days. Last spring, was it, high school, it was about a third each. So what we decided was that uh, uh, a survey is going to go out, um, a survey to parents, high school students, and staff, um, and sort of really find out where is this? Is this really a third, a third, a third? Is it uh, uh, overwhelmingly everybody wants two full days? I mean, we, we want to sort of meet people. Um, as best we can. There was conversation, this was interesting I thought, there was conversation about taking professional development on Monday and Tuesday of the Thanksgiving week and taking the whole week off, um, which in some ways sounds very appealing. Um, in other ways, um, it just creates more dissimilar days with paths. So that conversation didn't go very far. Uh, and the last time we had a survey about calendar was in 2017, so it was a while ago. So to be continued. For sure. For sure. But I think um, our hands are tied a little bit. Mm -hmm. The nice thing is is that the Christmas holiday and January falls very neatly this mm -hmm. year. So that was very clear. And it's been, in a, and maybe this will be changed going forward, but I recall, um, the desire um, among staff and parents to have the same schedules of professional development across all schools. Mm -hmm. So not like, so Pond Cove wouldn't have two full days and everybody else would have early release. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's been the pattern, that's been the wish in the past. We can do this. Yes, day. because it becomes, it hasn't been brought up yet. Um, but yes, it gets complicated for bus schedules, it gets complicated for childcare, it gets, com it, it, it gets complicated on the many many levels when right. you start digging in and really thinking about the details of it, for sure. Also, if we're focusing on um, having our staff collaborate right. with each other K-12. It's hard. to right. They need right. to have the same schedule. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item 10, may I have a motion? I move we adjourn. In a second? A second. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Donna, we're leaving these. For you. Yes, please leave the emergency plans. I need to take those back and get them to the.